The High Court has dismissed an application by Enoch Work to set aside the permanent injunction that was granted against him. The judge in this case, Mr Justice Mark Sanfi, stated that it is a valid order of this court and Mr Burke will comply with it or face the consequences. It is not open to Mr Burke to conclude unilaterally that the order of the court breaches his constitutional rights and is thus void ab initio, such that he does not have to comply with it. He does not get to pick and choose which order of the court directed to him that he will obey. The background is that but Mr Burke was suspended on paid administrative leave from Wilson's Hospital School in August 2022, arising from his refusal to address a student by a new name and a they pronoun. A disciplinary hearing in the case then was heard in the school in January 2023 and he was dismissed with effect from April 2021. His appeal was unsuccessful. Despite injunctive relief being granted, restraining Mr Burke from attending the school, he continued to attend and was committed to prison at various times for contempt of court. The school sought declarations that the decision to place Mr Burke on administrative leave was lawful and sought a perpetual injunction restraining him from trespassing on school premises and damages for trespass. Mr Burke counterclaimed for, amongst other things, for a declaration that the discipline process interfered with his constitutional rights and sought an injunction preventing the continuation of his suspension. The trial was heard over four days by Mr Justice uh, Alex Owens. In his judgment dated May 2023, Mr Justice Owens noted that Mr Burke had been removed from court on the first day of the trial due to disorderly conduct and had been excluded from further participation unless he provided an undertaking with the court's rulings. The said undertaking was not forthcoming and in circumstances where Mr Burke's counterclaim was not advanced by him, it was dismissed by order dated uh, July 2023, 17th of July, which also declared his suspension was lawful, granted an injunction against him and awarded damages of €15,000 to the school. Mr Burke then failed to comply with the said order and was thereafter committed to Mountjoy Prison until he purged his contempt. Despite periodic review, Mr Burke refused to give an undertaking to abide by the court's orders. In June 2024 then, Mr Burke presented to the High Court a document entitled Application to Set Aside Judgment of uh, Judge Alexander Owens which critiqued the court's judgment as violating his constitutional rights to, amongst other things, freedom of conscience and practice of religion. The matter was adjourned to allow the school to make legal submissions on the issue of whether a High Court judge had jurisdiction or authority to set aside a decision of another High Court judge. The hearing of that preliminary issue took place on the 28th of June 2024, last month before Mr Justice Sanfi, Mr Burke contended that Mr Justice Owens did not conduct any examination of whether or not the demand or instruction from the principal to address a pupil as they was lawful or legitimate. The school suggested that the application by Mr Burke was unsustainable, devoid of merit and bound to fail. The school also emphasised previous cases where uh, it stated that when proceedings have come to their natural conclusion, whether in a court of first instance or in the event of an appeal, as a result of a determination of the court which has the final appellate role in the circumstances of the case, then it can, at least in litigation involving the rights and obligations of parties, be said that the ruling of the court is a final ruling which can only be displaced in very limited circumstances such as where it can be demonstrated that the judgment of the court had been procured by fraud or the like. The school also highlighted that while Mr Burke had raised constitutional issues, he had failed to advance those points before Mr Justice Owens, despite being given ample opportunities to participate in the proceedings. Mr Burke responded, asserting that nonetheless Mr Justice Owens was obliged to take into account his constitutional rights and had failed to do so.
So the reference there is to Mr. Burke being excluded from the substantive hearing of the case because of his behaviour and the repeated invitation by the judge on that occasion, Mr. Justice Owens, inviting Mr. Burke back into the court to challenge witnesses and uh, contest the case if he gave an undertaking as to his conduct, but Mr. Burke refused to do so. Mr. Justice Sanfi then noted that he had listened to the digital audio recording of the hearing, finding that the sole issue for his determination was Mr. Burke's application to set aside the judgment of Mr. Justice Owens. The judge agreed with Mr. Burke's contention that he had invoked his constitutional rights in the pleadings leading up to the trial before Mr. Justice Owens and observed that the school had stood over its actions. The court considered paragraph 16 of Mr. Justice Owens' judgment which made it clear that as Mr. Burke's counterclaim was not being advanced, the claims made therein would be dismissed, observing Mr. Burke's contention that the court was obliged nonetheless to investigate whether there had been a breach of his constitutional rights even though he would not attend court to make the claim himself. He was actually outside. Addressing Mr. Burke's argument that the circumstances before the court came within the principle that an order could be reviewed in truly exceptional circumstances, the judge stated, in circumstances where his claims of breach of his rights were utterly and completely contested by a party who had launched the proceedings specifically to obtain judicial acknowledgement of the lawfulness of its actions, there can be no question of any alleged breach of his constitutional rights being so truly exceptional that the court would have to consider whether it should have to intervene on Mr. Burke's behalf, notwithstanding that he chose not to do so himself. Emphasising that the importance of finality in litigation requires that the reopening of final decisions be possible in only very extreme circumstances, Mr Justice Sanfi noted that Mr Burke had failed to avail of his right of appeal and had no plausible explanation as to why he did not avail of that right. So there are two important things to note here or observe. Number one is that at the substantive hearing between Mr Burke and Wilson's Hospital School as to the validity of the school's action, Mr Burke did not participate. He did not participate because he was excluded from court uh, because of his conduct and was invited in each day by the judge, uh, provided Mr Burke gave an undertaking as to his conduct and so forth, but Mr. Burke refused to do so. So Mr. Burke did not participate in the substantive hearing of the action. Secondly, he did not appeal to the Court of Appeal the decision of Mr. Justice Owens. The judge took the view that Mr. Burke's application fell so far short of the truly exceptional circumstances that the school's characterization of the application as an abuse of process was justified and the suggestion that Mr Justice Owens should have decided other than as he did was absurd and unstatable in law. Mr Justice Sanfi determined that the order of Mr Justice Owens was valid and that Mr Burke could not pick and choose which order of the court directed to him that he will obey. The court continued he has been imprisoned because he chooses not to obey the order of the court, the very same court which he now expects to come to his aid and uphold his allegations of breach of his constitutional rights, notwithstanding his refusal to contest the original trial or to appeal the judgment of the court. So the injunction, the, the permanent injunction that was granted by Mr Justice Owens in the High Court for Enoch Burke to stay away from the school premises is in place, is not set aside, and uh, that is the position. It will be interesting to see what happens uh, in uh, September or August, September, when the schools go back. Anyway, hope you find that video useful, and I uh, hope that uh, update on the whole Enoch Brook situation uh, is stimulating.